Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I have a video with Bailey Bennett. Bailey founded Yellow Petal Apothecary from her home in Northeast Ohio. I was so excited to talk to Bailey about all things natural living and natural beauty. Bailey is a great example of what it means to live a lifestyle that is friendly to the environment and that supports the health and happiness of her family. It was really wonderful. We talked about a lot of different topics. I wanted to talk to Bailey because she inspires me not only as a small businesswoman, but especially the values behind her business and the whole reason that she started her company. So I really hope that you enjoy this video. We had a lot of fun talking to each other about these topics. To make it helpful for you, I'm putting in the description box timestamps of when we start talking about different subjects. So if there's something that's particularly interesting for you, you can just jump right to that. So without further ado, I hope that you enjoy this video. Ciao, ciao. Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm with Bailey, the founder mm -hmm. of Yellow Petal Apothecary, Hello. and we are talking all about natural beauty, natural skin care, yes. Yes. organic Every living. Yes, everything natural. Great. And right now I'm just about to um, actually strain this infusion. Okay. This has been sitting since August 12th, wow. so really the longer the better with infusions. Mm -hmm. um, there's little particles in oils the same way in fats. I don't know if you know this, but a long time ago, they used to make infusions, herbal medicine with all animal fats. I didn't know that. So this is actually like more of the modern vegetarian or vegan way to do it. Okay. Um, it's a little bit less oily too. Okay, <laughs> nice. So we will go ahead and drain, strain this. So what is inside this? This has some lavender, plantain, calendula, um, yarrow, and dandelion. Very nice. Yeah. So this is the base for a lot of the um, serums that I have. Okay. And so are you able to use lots of, or use one infusion in many different products that you make? Yes. Okay. So. Oh, it smells so good. I know it is. It is <gasps> wow. That's it the smells yarrow. Smells very good. That's okay. The yarrow. So yarrow is really something that I think just sticks in your mind. At least for me, mm -hmm. it was one of the first herbs that I. I won't like this drain the whole thing, but it was one of the first herbs that I started really doing a lot of research with. Okay. And it just the smell. It's very it yeasty. Smells so good. Yeah, it's very. It's a. It's a one of a kind smell. I guess you yeah. could say. So I usually just let this go. Okay. And are these the dandelions? You those said? are actually calendula flowers. Oh, okay. The jar of those over okay. there. Yeah. They're so vibrant even after they are being uh, yes. in the oil for almost six, five months. Yeah, almost five months. Yeah. yeah, I didn't even realize that. Yeah. Wow. Um, so I would let this, you know, drain for quite a while. Okay, just to get everything. Every that you last can. bit, yeah. Every yeah. last bit. Even um, I know a lot of people do these with um, like wine presses or fruit okay. presses mm -hmm. to get every last bit. I don't have that quite yet, but <laughs> so we'll let that just drip over here. And okay. this is the oak serum that's been sitting for about a month already. Okay. Wow. Um, this. Not only does it have the benefits of the yolk in there, but it also is going to get receive the plant benefits as well. Wow, very nice. And so these eggs come from our chickens. Wow. Yes, our own chickens, which they're organically um, fed soy free. They fed soy free grain, and it's actually from local Java feed. Oh, great. Yeah. Yes. So we get try to do local as possible. Everything's very local. Yes, yes, everything is very Even local. Even from your own backyard. Yes, yes. exactly, <laughs> yeah. I wow. think that's what, when I started doing this, I think that's what I tried to, you know, take advantage of the most, was just like learn about what, what I have available to us, what's yes. natural around us, what's, you know, all the perennials and the, oh, I'm trying to get that. 
you know, all the perennials and all the plants that have been here for thousands of years that we've yeah. taken away and mm -hmm. try to get back into that. So then this Ooh. will sit again for about five months. Wow. And do you mix it or do you just leave it? I do mix it. I usually mix it about um, once a month. Okay. I'm sorry, once a week. I'm sorry, okay. so once a week. Wow. Yeah, it'll turn into like a, it turns into like a little bit of a, yellow like weird milkshake looking <laughs> but you can tell that it's very like you can tell the color difference mm -hmm. from yeah, this is the final. Yeah. yeah yeah and you can tell the color difference from the yolk serum with the everyday serum okay so that's these two yeah so this is just the plant matter oh okay it has a couple more um herbal infusions okay. than just this but that's you can tell like the difference of the yolk yes and the color and everything yes, it's very rich yeah and a lot of people ask have asked me this yeah. if we do if i do sun infusions what's a sun infusion so a sun infusion and it's probably the most common way that people use it is okay. um they'll just throw oil and put herbs in here and mm -hmm. sun next to the windowsill okay that's something that i don't like to do because the sun or solar power or whatever is very negative to plants as soon as they're dead. Okay. So okay. if I'm like plucking a flower off and I'm drying it and then putting it in the infusion, mm -hmm. it's it's dying inside. It's almost like the plant matter is being destroyed. Okay. So while you'll get a pretty color sometimes, it's not really worth it for the medicinal value. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> So it's just, it's different. A lot of people do it different ways and mm -hmm. different apothecaries yes. different ways, but yeah. I found that that works the best is oh, just to be yeah. in a dark corner for okay. as long as possible. Yes, and then you just go back and check in on it. Yeah, them. check in and every once in a while. I'll actually probably fill these more with the scrap that's left here yeah. like as it drains. Um, you want as little air as possible, make sure there's no mold growth, things like that. Those okay. are all very, you know, concerning. Yeah, sure. So what do we have here? Okay, so we have the bug spray, which is also in a bug bar okay. and just a little roller. Okay. Um, this is actually the product that got me into natural products and making them. Um, yeah. When I rescued my dog seven, seven or eight years ago, um, they were using the flea and tick medication. Of course. And yeah. It burnt their skin alive oh. to both of them. Oh so whichever gosh. brand I had used, yes. I don't remember now, but I was just like, what could we do? Can we do better? You yes. know? So I started doing my research about different plants. And at that point I was using all essential oils. Okay. You no, know, I didn't have the garden and stuff like mm -hmm. that, you know, but I was using all essential oils and I came up with this, which is pretty much the same recipe or whatever that I use now okay. although if they would say it's a little it has a couple more more herbal you know medicinal yes. properties than it used to but yeah um this one's great I use this on Tucker if we're going through the creek walking yeah. you know um I also put this on the dog's collars okay it stays on really well yes. when we're swimming mm -hmm. or whatever on their is. collar not yeah. on them well you can put it on them there's okay. nothing wrong but okay. I find that like it comes off really easy when, when they're swimming and stuff. Okay. So I feel like it stays on a lot better with the wax, which is okay. also housed with local beeswax. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Nice. So yeah, I have a spray bottle and a little roller. Um, yeah, and I think that I started making these for my mom. I made them for my sister-in-law. And I mean, this, is, this was more recent, mm -hmm. but it really works yeah. and everyone uses them for themselves and mm -hmm. not just dogs obviously <laughs> but um I've gotten such good feedback and I was giving them as gifts and everyone was just like I think it was actually my sister-in-law who said I I'll buy them from you yeah. you know let's yeah. why don't you sell mm -hmm. them on Etsy or something and Instead of using Etsy, I did a different website, but mm -hmm. yeah, that's pretty much how it got started. That's how you made the jump from just making products for yes. yourself and your family to selling them yeah. in your own Yeah, and company. I know, yeah, and there's hundreds of people who make things mm -hmm. on, you know, homemade things on Etsy or whatever the websites mm -hmm. are, but yeah, I, I thought that it was a little bit different. I have tried some of those and support some of the small businesses, mm -hmm. but nothing worked quite as well for yeah. like... 
ticks, flies, mosquitoes, mm -hmm. gnats, everything. everything so you haven't had a problem with the dogs? No. I mean, being out in the countryside? No. Every t I, I mean, you have to use it every day. Okay. That's yeah. one thing I know, like the convenience factor might outweigh it for some people, mm -hmm. but I think it's yeah. pretty much like... For the dogs, it. do you only put this on their collar or do you I use, do do spray use, on Oh, their I use the spray, yeah. Okay. I spray them all over, especially okay. around their head and neck. That's where the ticks seem to okay. try to jump to okay. or whatever, oh, which is why, yeah, I think that's where they, like on the package of the actual flea and tick medications where mm -hmm. they tell them to put it. But yeah, same way, same, okay. same thing. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Okay. so this bug spray, yes. I've actually taken with me traveling. Yes. Um, many different climates. Perfect. And I love it. Good. It works no matter where I am, and the yes. mosquitoes, you know, they're different. We've well, been in so many different places. places too. So <laughs> yes, and I've see. never had a problem. Got and it. one thing I love about using natural products is that you know when you hear the mosquito buzzing and you're trying to sleep, um, I can just grab the bug yeah. spray and just spritz it, and I don't yeah. have to worry about yeah um, getting chemicals in my face or, or your or, pillow or whatever. Yes, yeah, exactly. Anything. And Anything. actually, people tell me they love the smell. They, they think it's my perfume. Oh, my God. I, that's so funny. A couple of people have said that to me. I'm not, I haven't quite used this perfume. Yeah. But it is. Yeah, my sister took it to Hawaii with her. She mm -hmm. said she didn't get touched. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm very, yeah. I'm very it's happy a great, with it. It's a great product. Good. Thank sure. you. Yeah. yeah. And I think the other thing I kind of got me started, which yes. if we'll switch gears to the, um, the hair tonic. Um, so, this oh, wow. is hair tonic from kombucha okay um it sits for quite some time because kombucha is a yeast and the yeast feeds off of sugar so if i were to just give this to you or this to you mm -hmm. and i hadn't let it sit or infuse your hair would be sticky okay. it would be like a gooey mess okay. um but at this point um the yeast has eaten all the sugars off you can kind of see there's a little bit of a carbonation yes. still there so this one was done on the 20th of November okay so it hasn't had as long of a time to you know infuse but actually you can tell this I don't know well it's pretty dark compared to like fresh okay right out of the back kombucha but okay. this was done about five months ago and wow. I have strained it and everything since but you can tell the same way we were talking before about the way the fats infuse mm -hmm. Um, vinegars do the same thing. So okay. all the plant matter has mm -hmm. left the rosemary. Wow. And it's transferred into the vinegar, which is this what? Is just rosemary. Oh, yeah. Just wow. rosemary. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Totally. Look at the difference. The difference in color. Yes, I don't know you, if you can, can see. But yeah. Yeah. So that was one of my favorite things. Mm -hmm. um, you can use it as, I know it comes in a little dropper bottle. This is something <laughs> I just did. But I personally mm -hmm. just put a couple drops on my scalp every night. Okay. Um, it really helps. And just like massage it. Yeah, in. you can massage it in. Okay. Um, if you dilute it one to one with water, you can use it as a dry shampoo. Oh, okay. Um, my sister said it really helped with her like waves. Oh, <laughs> More like a beachy thing. Okay. Um, nice. but I started this out because I have a lot of hair loss because of my um thyroid issues. So. Okay. That was the whole, mm -hmm. I was just looking for something that would just help the health of my hair too. Yes. I have noticed a lot less just wow. hair loss mm -hmm. and regrowth and yes. stuff. But rosemary is really good antibacterial, antiseptic. Mm -hmm. um, it's also known to pull things out. So like if okay. you have a clogged... I know like um, dry, a lot of people use dry shampoo lately. Yeah. So that dry shampoo is really just clogging your pores. Like and like if you were to put a baby powder on your face, it's a okay. clogged thing. You oh, know? okay. So sometimes you'll get like bald patches or just a clogged mm. hair follicle. This okay. really helps. It just helps yes. release everything. Yeah. And, and, and it oh, also okay. will strip, you know, if any like cheap shampoos, which I guilty of sometimes <laughs> but it helps strip everything and okay. go back to your you know regular state of yes. beautiful shiny hair <laughs> great yeah great. so speaking of deodorants and health and stuff I think both of us know that our both of our moms had breast cancer mm -hmm. yeah and I think that one of the first things I don't know for me at least that comes to mind is your deodorant. Yes. I mean, I think that's kind of been like linked to cancer mm -hmm. over the years, especially lately. Yes. And after doing a lot of research, mm -hmm. all those deodorants, I mean, especially antiperspirants, yes. they're just clogging your pores. Mm -hmm. They're 
pushing everything back up in there so you're not sweating. I mean, I don't think people understand. I don't think people understand. It's very hard yes. to explain, but you you should be sweating. It's natural to sweat. Of you course. gotta get all those like bad things <laughs> mm-hmm. out. Your armpits are yes. key to get yes. everything out, like all the toxins mm-hmm. and yeah. All it's this. a natural process. Oh yeah, totally. It's totally natural. It should be mm-hmm. viewed as such. And yeah, so an antiperspirant is just stopping that. Yeah, I mean a regular deodorant has the terrible ingredients to begin with, but an antiperspirant is just taking it up a notch and yeah. just totally screwing with your body's pH and like the toxins released and it's it's. I would suggest everyone do their own research because yeah. I don't want to harp, <laughs> but it's very important. So. You have a citrus flavor, mm-hmm. there's a rosemary lemon, I've used these two, this one's probably my favorite, and a peppermint tea tree is my favorite. They all smell. Yeah. Very nice. Good. Yes. <laughs> Good. And these are all, all contain plant matter, medicinal plants, and pulling agents. Okay. Which I get from organic charcoal and um, diatomaceous earth. Wow. Yes. And diatomaceous earth is actually like a microscopic shell shell creature that they grind up um we put it on our beds once in a while for okay. like um bed bugs i mean not okay. that we, we haven't had bed bugs but mm-hmm. it's it's a good preventative a med- deterrent measure. yeah a deterrent mm-hmm. um i use it outside in the garden for pests okay. any worms on my plants and stuff oh totally okay. kills them you do have to watch it um with the amount just in de- ingesting it wise the chicken coop is covered in diatomaceous earth just for all the bugs and mm-hmm. stuff. So there's a lot of different ways to use it. I would suggest everyone have it in their household. Wow, I've my... never heard of it before. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's one of my most used wow. products. Yes. All right. And you can get it, um, I think we got our butt bag on Amazon. It was food grade and organic. Okay. So yeah. it's, it's, it's not yeah. bad for you. No, no, no. <laughs> but I think we wanted to talk about... Just the transition of natural deodorant. Yes, because some people are hesitant uh, to use a natural deodorant because if they haven't used one before, oh, yeah. you know, you hear things. It's a lot. Yeah, it is a change because your body has been not yeah. doing its natural processes yeah. for years. Oh, yes. So you have to give yourself time to adjust. Yes, and I adjust. think even like as your own self, you kind of have to get reused to your body's odor almost. Mm-hmm. Not that it's a strong, but just... Right. Yes. Just getting yourself... Something that's supposed yeah, to be Yeah, it's there. just, it's yeah. different. So I would say it's definitely, definitely a transition period. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that it's really awesome to change it in the winter because I you're think not, that's a good time. You're not yes. sweating or anything mm-hmm. as much. Yeah. And I think that, yeah, I don't know. I think, I think it would be best in the winter. I yeah. also, I, I do make these fresh, um rollers as well with organic peppermint um which is infused with witch hazel Mm -hmm. and it's it's great to carry around if you're having an issue with the odor Mm -hmm. i mean it does settle out yeah you shouldn't be like saying like oh it's this worst (laughs) thing but your your body odor totally settles itself out Mm -hmm. and all that but i think that just having like a handy little roller of your Mm -hmm. favorite scent or your favorite perfume or even i you know taking this i was gonna say yeah yes the first couple weeks that mm-hmm. I did the switch, um, I was just had this in my bag and it was totally yeah. fine, totally yeah. normal. But it does, it does a good job of pulling. It's pulling all the toxins mm-hmm. out, so it's a really good detox for your body. One of the things that I love about your approach to sustainable living and your business is that everything has a purpose. Yes. And you do everything very consciously yes. from growing your own plants to... The packaging that mm-hmm. you use. The packaging, yes. I read that if someone tries your deodorant and they don't care for it or they're just not ready to make the switch yes, yet, yes. that they could actually use it as a face mask. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what would you do for that? So um, let's say you buy the deodorant yeah. and then it's just not your thing. Yeah, and I know that might sound weird, but <laughs> it's in like a pull-up, push-up stick, okay. and you would push it up just the same way that you would for the deodorant and just kind of use it. Face. Oh, okay. It was the same yeah. thing. Um, if you have like bikinis, like stubs, mm-hmm. like just from waxing or shaving your bikini line in the summer, yeah. use it there. That's okay. Really like I used to get a lot of razor burn under my armpits. Mm-hmm. Totally gone since wow. I've been using this. Yes. So it, yeah, it has a bunch of different things. Yeah. And that's the other thing I love about it is that not only is it not harmful for you, but it's actually helping you. Because yes. 
using these ingredients, your skin is softer, it's not irritated, yes. dry. Yeah. So I've had really positive benefits of using it. Oh, good. It. And men, too. Yeah. If you are sh like a shaver of your face and you have an ingrown hair mm -hmm. or something along those lines, use this okay yeah. it will be gone as soon as possible it really wow it's almost like an aftershave too oh, okay yeah. yeah i know right. you probably don't want to be like using carpets <laughs> and like putting on your face but if you you know if it's not mm -hmm. working for you as a deodorant right. yes you're right i do yes. try to have multiple uses for each product yeah. and they're housed in this is all recyclable material that right. they've recycled and it's biodegradable so all you have to do is throw this in the compost and you're done. Perfect. And which is, yeah, perfect. perfect. There you go. <laughs> so the serums are kind of have the same like thought behind them. Um, they're pulling agents and like the, this one's a really good for, I mean, these are both really good for acne. Um, any like rosacea, if you have any um, psoriasis, eczema, Kyle has really, bad psoriasis on his he has a really big beard so he has gets psoriasis under his beard and he yeah. gets it on his head and his eyebrows in the winter mm -hmm. so i mean he does he shaves his head in the winter but he uses this and, and this is the everyday serum. yes the everyday mm -hmm. serum these are kind of like interchangeable i would say okay. um and the golden yolk yes. yeah the golden yolk this one has a little bit stronger medicinal properties just because it has the yolks as well as okay. everything in here. Mm -hmm. um, the yolks are pro have really teeny tiny proteins that help wake up the capillaries under your skin. Mm -hmm. And it gives you like a nice refreshed look. It helps your skin regenerate itself. Mm -hmm. It's it's just, wow. yeah, yeah, it's really just a good product. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then the morning serum mm -hmm. is really good for any puffiness you might have in your face. Okay. This one's kind of like trying to smell it. Smells very similar to the fresh roller. Oh yes, it's yes. with it's got um homegrown peppermint, homegrown rosemary, um, homegrown chamomile, and this yeah, yeah. Yeah. and this one. While it still has some of the medicinal properties of these two as well, these one because it's a little bit stronger. I would suggest like for puffiness, okay, like around your yeah. eyes in the morning. It also the um, medicinal herbs that are in it. It also will help your like wake you up in the morning. It's supposed to, you know, rosemary is supposed to be good for memory and getting yourself going. There so I feel go. like this one's, I do use this one a lot when I'm like just laughing or like the yes. sun's not out yet mm -hmm. or something. So yeah. it really gives you like mood boosts and everything mm -hmm. else for the yeah. morning. Now do you, sh do you shake them all up before you Yeah, use them? this one, they or should be pretty, of... this one has, you can see the little bit of the, oh, of the mm -hmm. yolk at the bottom. So the, uh, the golden yolk one, I would say, I do write that in there that separation is natural. Shake, shake vigorously. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, this is Great. the only one that you should be shaking. Mm -hmm. But if you don't get all that, it's it's still within the oil. Yes. It's just sediment at the bottom. So. Okay. Yeah. Great. So how do you use these in your daily uh, skincare routine? Okay. So the yolk and the every day, I actually alternate every other day. Okay. I will just take like I would say that much. Okay. Just that small. See that. About a drop. dime size. Yeah. And I just mm -hmm. oh my face. I could do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I know, like, but I I mean this is good for yes. lotion. Mm -hmm. If you have cracked heels. Okay. You know, like mm -hmm. just from the winter and yes. just you know, it's it's good for everything. Yeah. It's just a really deep moisturizer. Right. Um they also have yarrow and calendula. Mm -hmm. Um they're both so which are both like pulling agents. So with acne, a lot of people ask me like, what's your spot treatment? What do you, you know, I used to have like those drying lotions and I think that just starts kind of like a really vicious cycle. Drying out skin or drying out bits of your skin and then yeah. your skin's overproducing oil to try to counteract that dryness. And it just becomes a vicious cycle really. Yes. Um, so this is kind of like the oils working with your skin um, I know it sounds silly but to put oil on a pimple, but it actually helps it come out. Okay, it's yes. A, because of all the medicinal properties that are mm -hmm. drawing things out, it's, yes. it comes right out without having to mess up your entire face pH. So I think Great. that that's like mm -hmm. something that is a really hard concept for everyone because we are so used to 
the drying lotions and right. like yes. I mean I, we were I've been doing that since I was sixteen like yeah. the light and like you have to get the blue light yeah. treatments I mean I I had bad acne okay. body, but I had and I still I have like scarring and mm -hmm. but yeah. yeah these have these have helped majorly so yeah. we have to retrain yeah you do you do you're right not retrain but learn no about, you're right you're yeah. right retrain because you have to train retrain your body the same mm -hmm. way with the deodorant you're yeah. retraining mm -hmm. the way your body's exiting the toxins and right. things like that so yeah. no you're probably right that's a good word <laughs> that's a good word <laughs> and learn about where our products come from and what's in them yes. yes yes i think that's very. a very very important very important topic yeah. yeah what about the whipped lotion so where what do you use the whipped lotion for i use it all over like just as body lotion oh, okay mm -hmm. um there's actually i've been passing me that full one this, this one. is yeah this is the same same type of thing. Okay. Well, same, same whipped lotion. This whole one, I think, lasted me a year. Wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I only make them in the winter because they're made of oil, which in its natural state will melt. Yes. Um, but once they're whipped, I usually keep it in the bathroom and it's it doesn't melt. It's good for a year. Okay. But yeah, this wow. has the same medicinal properties as the everyday serum. Okay. So it's, wow. Mm -hmm. it's still like good for your skin, mm -hmm. antibacterial, all yeah. that stuff. And it's just without any of the chemicals or, you know, like I think a lot of lotions have vegetable glycerin. Okay. I believe that's how they make it so silky. Okay. So this is just, these are just oils. Yeah. I think there's about six or seven oils in here that are just whipped and whipped and whipped. Wow. Yeah. yeah that's and that's, great. it seems very simple, but. It's just so refreshing when you are using products that you know, have no nothing chemicals in, in it. Them. Nothing in yes, it. Yeah. You can just feel yes. so relaxed. And, and I would say the one downside to that is you need to keep your hands clean when they're going in. That's a very good yes. point. Yes. Very clean. Um, yeah. Natural things can mold very easily if you're not okay. cleaning. It's just very, very conscious of right. how clean your hands are yeah. going in because it's not in like a squirt tube or something right. like that. So Just like you would want your hands to not have all the germs on them right. touching your face. Exactly. You have to take care of these as exactly. well. Exactly. And because they're all natural as well, you need to use the products when you get them, exactly. right? Yes, that's what you're, yes, that was another mm -hmm. point, yes. Yeah, I think that shelf life sometimes on, you know, all natural products, it's a little bit shorter, but I think if you care for them the way you were supposed to and, mm -hmm use them in a temperature regulated area, you know, with out of direct sunlight, those are all really great things to keep in mind. Like if this was sitting in the sun, mm -hmm. I don't know if it would get mold. I okay. doubt it, but the sun is such a different, you know, the solar energy and heat mixed with oxygen can result in different we don't know what's yeah, going to happen. Yeah, we just don't know. Yeah. We just don't know. Yeah. So it's important to keep uh, any of the serums yes. out of the direct sunlight. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like we have them in our mirror, you know. Okay. Just in the cabinet. Yeah, just in the med medicinal cabinet. Right. Med <laughs> the medicine cabinet, yes. Just the for, for the whipped lotion yes. in the summer, yes. could you keep this in the fridge? Oh, yeah. Okay. I made a couple extra ones last year, and I kept them in the fridge just because I had some local customers mm -hmm. that, you know, were coming back. Yeah. And I didn't ship them because we just don't know. But, yeah, they <laughs> okay. I kept them in the fridge, and it was totally fine. It's actually really refreshing if you keep it in the fridge. I like, imagine. Like, it's like an aloe almost, like, yes. when you're using it. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. great. Okay, so this, we have rose, just rosemary. Yes. And kombucha. And kombucha. Yes. That's it. That's it. Yes. So I think, like, the timing of things, I think that's where a lot of people might not understand, like, when I run out of stock of something, mm -hmm. it's really out of stock yeah. until, I, you know, the infusion's done. It's not that I don't want to go make you it. It's just mm -hmm. that I don't want you to get any lower of a medicinal value than you should. Mm -hmm. Um so I think the timing and how long products takes, it usually, I would say from the time I put a seed in the ground okay. until it's in a bottle is probably a year. Wow. So yeah. <laughs> so for my summer garden, I'm actually like this afternoon, I'll probably spend some time planning out my summer garden mm -hmm. and just looking at what seeds I have and stuff. And there's that's, so much to consider. So much, and so there's much. so much that goes into every... Yes product that you make yes exactly and I think it 
you have to think about so many different factors and like companion planting and all those things that it's just it takes a long time so when we're in this stage of the plants I mean most of the time I'm not getting a harvest until late summer okay early you know fall mm -hmm. a lot, you know a bountiful I should yeah. say like sometimes I'm picking a couple here and there that mm -hmm. are early but it's a lot of the times it's I'm waiting until the end of fall and it's everything's really in abundance um because you also don't want to weaken the plant too um so yeah i would say that i start collecting things they go right into an organic oil um that sits for at least three months wow yeah with you checking in on it yeah oh yeah oh yeah Flipping rotating it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah every day mm -hmm. or not every day every week I'm I'm checking on it usually pretty much every day because you never know if there's like a teeny bit of moisture that gets in there mm -hmm. I mean those things really yeah. when you get a mold or something it's really important to be careful with that stuff okay. yeah I think that everything all the infl infusions that especially do come from the garden um wow. I'm trying to think the only things I really outsource is like the honey and the wax which mm -hmm. we have been really lucky to trade with some local people. Wow. Yeah, making bread and eggs or something. And someone that Kyle works with has done a really good job. She got bees for the first year and gave us so much honey. And Amazing. Yeah, and it's so great to, I, I don't know, like that. trade I, again. Yes. And, you know, <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's really fun to get local products. Yeah. Small business. Amazing. Yeah, it's really yeah. awesome. Support other small businesses. Yes. 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 Exactly. Yeah. So everything that goes in is definitely, you know, organic and yeah. small. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's what I love about your products, too, is that everything is done consciously. Everything yes. comes from a need, yes. from a thought that you yes. have about something. Yes. And then you plant the herb or the flower. Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. And I think, like, when I started, I just was really like, oh, what's around me? You know, mm -hmm. like... You really go out yeah. with a field guide or something. Like, I found I had uh, rose hip bushes next to us. You know, wow. like, I would have never yes. really thought about that mm -hmm. before. They're just red berries. But just, you know, it's it's really neat once you really, like, pay attention to your surroundings. I think that's yeah. really being, like, connected to the source yeah. and all those things. The seasons. Yes. yes. Connected to the seasons, mm -hmm. yeah. And with growing your own food, yes. you're connected to the seasons as well. Yes, mm -hmm. very much so. Uh, which is why we have so many, you know, just squash or, uh, well, squash are dwindling now, <laughs> but the storage squash are still there and mm -hmm. yeah, all the pumpkin that goes into the golden bars mm -hmm. and stuff like yes. that. Yeah. And you can your own food as well? Yes. Everything's canned. Some of it's like not ours, like the apples. Are not ours that we go to a local farm and we pick oh. and then process them ourselves. Mm -hmm. Same with the tomatoes this year. Oh, I don't know who ours, but the tomatoes this year just didn't do the, the best. I think we just had a really wet season last year, mm. so we ended up going to a local farm and picking about 30 pounds and came out to process. Oh my gosh, it. Wow. I know it's funny, <laughs> but it was it was really nice. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and we get to support some local too, exactly. Yeah. Great. How would you say that since adopting these sustainable practices, what types of changes have you seen in your family's lifestyle? Um, well, we don't really have garbage. We don't really have a trash, we, well, we don't have a trash pickup. Um, everything that we eat mostly comes out of a jar. <laughs> Not this jar, but like glass jars. We have so many glass jars around here just filled with food. Um, I've learned to bake our own bread. Um, I think composting is probably the easiest thing to dip your foot into okay. this sustainable lifestyle. Um, food waste that you have every day mm -hmm. that's just getting thrown out can be, you know, transplanted into something totally different, just morphs into great soil. Um, and it's really like, something that you can kind of just forget about. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be, like, I know they, they have, like, hot compost piles and stuff, and okay. that's where you get the um, the pH level to a certain degree, mm -hmm. and everything breaks down a lot faster. Mm -hmm. um, we don't even, we don't have that here right now because of the weather, but we have a hot compost in the summer, but it's, you don't even have to have that. You can just throw things in a bin. You know, it's like, yeah. it's a really easy way to get into it. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. 
I think even like the cleaners that we buy, we need to be really aware of. Mm -hmm. Things that are just getting washed down our drain, into our septic, into the groundwater. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of our cleaning stuff comes from just vinegar and citrus, which is another thing I don't like to waste. Yes. Or the rinds, the citrus yeah. rinds. Um, I use vinegar also to clean, okay. just vinegar and water. Yeah. And now if you put citrus rinds in there, do you, is it... Does it ever damage something if it has like the citrus rind like because the, of the acidity? Or I've I have never. Okay. I use it um, counter surface everything. The only time I use plain white vinegar is on the windows. Okay. Because you kind of sometimes can get like a little streaks okay. if you're using oh, okay with the citrus vinegar. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, I have a couple jars over there that are just steeping. <laughs> but yeah, a cleaner. Yeah, a homemade cleaner. 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 Yes. Do Which, you ever go to a grocery store? We do. <laughs> Not as much though. That's funny. Um. I think, like, sometimes the only reason we would go is probably because we have a toddler. Okay. Who likes bananas. Uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> hard to grow bananas it in is. Ohio. Yes, <laughs> exactly. But it is, I think, like, more just because it's nice to have some fresh stuff on hand mm -hmm. just for a toddler. And, yes. like, oh. right now we don't have any lettuce growing this year. For some reason it didn't take off our winter lettuce. So we have some lettuce in the fridge, but... Nice. For the most part, for the you most have a part, circular, we try to a circular lifestyle. Yeah, we yeah. really try to. Yeah, That's amazing. Yeah, so inspired. Oh, I think. <laughs> yeah, we actually we also we're really lucky. We live across the street from a mill. Oh, so all the flour. Mm -hmm. Kyle just went and got like a fifty pound bag. So we, it's supporting. No a, a way. Course. Yeah, That's but so it's cool. really neat. Yeah, <laughs> so it's really neat. Amazing. Yeah, local business mm -hmm. and you're getting the. Best product too, really. Wow. Instead of yeah. and the packaging. Fresh from the mill. Yeah. Yes. One biodegradable cardboard bag instead of five different for a pound yes. each or whatever. Yes. So yeah. Wow. Amazing. I would say that's another neat resource. That's amazing. Yeah. That's so yeah. cool. All right. So here we have a bunch of eggs. Yes. And these are the eggs that go into the golden yes. yolk serum. Mm -hmm. And tell me about um, the, eggs. the chickens are our pet chickens. They're <laughs> obviously like they're raised here. They live the life. They truly do. <laughs> they're totally free range on our property. Um, they eat the best food, even though it's more expensive than our dog food. <laughs> but um, yeah, they eat local, um, not grain free because it doesn't have grain, soy free grain, um, mm -hmm. scratch grain. And yeah, there's we have five of them. They're, I love them. They all have their own personalities, mm -hmm. which is so funny. One of the ones, the black one is always the troublemaker. I don't probably post too many of videos of her because <laughs> she's such a troublemaker. But yeah, we eat their eggs. Um, they're much more golden and yummy than the store bought. That's mm -hmm. for sure for me. That's yeah. I notice a difference. But yeah, the I tried to use as much as I could of like of our extra. Mm -hmm. um, in the yolk serum that goes in, and actually some of it goes into the golden bars too. Okay, the yeah. face bar yes. that you have. Yeah, yes. this one's just a little more concentrated, but yeah. Okay. Um, there's a, yeah, they sit out on the counter. Um, actually a little fun fact is that eggs, do if they're not washed, okay, they can sit out on the counter up to six months. Wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. so there's a little coating that coats them when they're laid. Oh, okay. And they can sit out at room temperature for... Wow. For six months, yeah. So we have a whole basket. Wow. <laughs> we just keep the basket here until mm -hmm. we use them and everything. So, yeah. yeah. As long as they have not been refrigerated. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So once you put them in the refrigerator, you should probably keep them in the refrigerator. In the refrigerator. Okay. But, yeah, it's much easier, like, for our storage and stuff because mm -hmm. we have so many of them that they... <laughs> They pile yeah, up sometimes, I so imagine. yeah. And I did. We froze a couple of them for because I didn't. I we weren't sure. I've never had chickens, so we weren't <laughs> sure if they were gonna lay through the winter. Which okay, we had like a one egg a day in the winter. We were getting five in the summer. Wow. So yes. we froze some in little hockey puck, you know, muffin tins. So we had those to like recipes and stuff too. So there you go. Yeah. Wow. Everything in these products comes from. The surrounding Literally little your like, garden. one sixteenth of an acre. Yes. <laughs> <Not a teeny laughs> tiny area. Yes. Yes, Everything. they definitely do. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay.
everyone. I hope you enjoyed this chat with Bailey, yes. founder of Yellow Petal Thank Apothecary. Thank you for coming. Thank you so Thank much for coming. having me. And if you are interested in checking out more of her products, she has a great Instagram page at Yellow Petal Apothecary. Mm -hmm. And also all of her products are available on her website. Yep, just yellowpetalapothecary.com. Yellowpetalapothecary.com. Yep. Great. And like you said, I love seeing all the new products. You have to check pretty frequently because like you said, when things run out, yes. it's because they're out for the season. Yeah. There's no, the, it's winter, the yeah. herbs yeah. aren't growing yeah. at the moment. And then she's always coming up with new things awesome. to put in yes. there. And you ship. Yes. Uh, to the United States. Yep. Yeah. Everywhere in the United States. Yeah. Great. Yeah. And I think that Instagram is probably the best way to keep up with what the you daily have. or yes. contact me. I'm always an open book if anyone ever has questions. So. Great. Yeah. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks, yeah. Thanks for coming, too. <laughs> See you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>